Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because I am going to be going through all the products, and there are a lot of them, that I was influenced to purchase and whether or not I regret them. I was actually very influenced to do this video. Carrie Dayton uploaded um, a video like this a couple weeks ago and I loved it and I immediately put on my little list of videos that I wanted to film. And there is quite the variety. We've got beauty, fashion, uh, lifestyle things, even some pet stuff. So I really hope that you guys are going to enjoy this type of video. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments on everything that I'm talking about. If you agree with my thoughts, if you disagree, let me know. And let's just get right into it. When I was putting together this list of products, Adidas Sambas was the very first thing that came to mind because this is probably my freshest regret. Now the Sambas have been around for a very long time, but as with a lot of things, especially in fashion, there is a resurgence and they really gained a lot of popularity. I'm typically like pretty strict with myself when it comes to buying products that I feel like I'm being influenced to purchase. If I get this urge to purchase something and I know it's just kind of coming out of nowhere, I will force myself to wait like a week or two. And more often than not, I will completely forget about that product and I won't end up wasting my money on it, which is great. But then there are times where I just can't get it out of my head and even a week or two later, I'm like, okay, maybe I do want to consider purchasing these and that's what happened with the Sambas. I, sh I shouldn't have done it though because I do regret buying these. First of all, I find them to be like kind of uncomfortable. They're a very, very flat shoe and I just don't find them to be great to walk around a ton in. Um, I know a lot of people have a very different experience than that, but it just is not a comfy shoe for me at all. Maybe it's my foot, I don't know. I also find that when I walk my heel Heel lifts out the back every step and this is my correct size like they fit me perfectly besides the lifting part so that is also a thing that I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of I find that these shoes just kind of look like a bowling shoe on me I've tried to style them in so many different ways with dresses with skirts with baggy jeans and I just don't feel like I'm ever able to make them look good like every time I put them on I just take them right off there's one thing that was totally my fault and that was my color choice this was a horrible, horrible color choice. When I first bought it, I was like, oh my God, this color is so cool because I love sage green. But realistically, like this is just not really a shoe that goes with a lot of things. And I definitely wish I would have gotten it in maybe like a cream color or a beige color. Maybe I would feel a little bit differently, but even still, just the silhouette of the shoe is just not for me. And I spoke about this on TikTok and people got very, very upset with me. So don't get mad at me <laughs> for saying that I don't like the Sambas. They're just not for me. It's totally okay. I think I'll probably end up selling these at one point. They're still almost like brand new. Like look at the soles. When it comes to a sneaker, if I'm going to wear one, I I just prefer something like a New Balance. That's like my go-to. That's my feeling with the Sambas and that's why I do regret buying them. Taylor Swift influenced me <laughs> to get this bag. If you didn't know, I am completely obsessed with Taylor Swift. There was a photo of her wearing it. I saw the photo. I said, I know where that bag is from. I went to the website. I purchased it without even thinking twice. This is what the bag looks like. It's from the brand Open or Open A. U-P-E-N and I'd actually heard about the brand before and I had browsed their bags and they definitely piqued my interest because I thought that they were really cute and there were even times when I went on the website to go purchase one but then I kind of changed my mind and I didn't but the Taylor Swift thing really like threw me over the edge. The bag is super cute. It's actually a vegan leather and it's really 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 soft. You honestly wouldn't even know like to me this totally feels like real leather. It's a really interesting and unique shape, which I love. That's what really like drew me to it in the first place. And it's not so unique and so different that it, in a year from now, I'm not gonna like it anymore. Like I feel like this is still a pretty timeless bag. I love the detail on the strap. This little charm too is so cute and it's really, really heavy. and feels like really nice quality. It holds like a perfect amount of stuff. It's a great nighttime bag. So overall, I really love it and I actually wear it all the time and I definitely don't regret it, but it is a pricier bag. $469 Canadian so definitely not inexpensive I remember buying it and then having this like feeling of regret after buying it because I was on such a high like purchasing this so quickly um, and I didn't really allow myself to think and again with any purchase big or small I always like to kind of allow myself time to get off like the high of finding a new product so that I can think clearly. And I just didn't feel like I really thought that one through. So I was a little bit nervous that I would regret it um, because it's not a cheap product. And I'm really happy that I don't regret it and I get a lot of use out of it. But I feel like if maybe I didn't see Taylor Swift wearing this, I probably wouldn't have purchased it. The influence was definitely um, a huge factor in why I purchased this bag. All in all, I'm really happy that I have it in my collection. I get so much use out of it. It's now one of my go-to going out bags. Would I buy it again? I think I would actually, I think I would. Now that I have it and I know 
how nice it is and how great it fits in my collection, I probably would. The next fashion item that I wanted to talk about is something that I actually don't have here with me because I already returned it. And this was over a year ago at this point, but I still wanted to mention it because I do feel like they are still pretty trendy and hyped up quite a bit. And it's the UGG platforms. Now I am a big, big fan of UGGs. I love UGGs. I've been wearing UGGs since I was like, I don't know, 11 years old. I have tried many different styles of UGGs as well. I think my favorite UGG boot are actually like their waterproof winter boots because I do live in Montreal in a very snowy climate. And so like the classic UGGs, while they're really great, they don't really hold up great in Montreal winters. They're not really meant for snow. So I feel like there's a really short amount of time that I'm actually able to wear them, but I still have purchased them in the past and I still do have worn them both in the snow and kind of like in like the fall time and I've really enjoyed them. So I thought that when the platform UGG kind of got really popular and people were talking about it, I thought it was a no brainer. I thought that I would really enjoy it and it just wasn't a great shoe for me. Functionally, I found that they were just not great to walk in. Very similar to my Adidas Sambas actually. Every time I would take a step, my heel would lift out of the, of the UGG and it was just really uncomfortable. Like, and I also felt like they were almost too high. <laughs> like that type of boot just doesn't feel like it's meant to be that platform because there's no flex to them at all. And it's quite a big platform. It kind of feels like you're walking on stilts. Maybe that's a little bit dramatic, but that's kind of what it feels like. And so I just don't feel super stable walking in them, which was another big issue that I had. As far as the way that they looked, I. I liked them. I thought that they were fine. They looked like Uggs. There wasn't any part of that that I wasn't expecting or anything like that. It was more so like the fit and the way that they felt. And then I started thinking, I was like, there's no way that I can wear these even with just like an inch of snow on the ground because the short Uggs are so short and your ankle is so exposed, snow will be getting in there in like two seconds. So even though they're not really meant to be worn in the snow, people still do. And I probably would have still worn them in the snow and it just wouldn't it just wouldn't have worked. So with all that said, they just didn't make sense for me. So I ended up returning them. And uh, that's all I gotta say about those. The Aritzia Super Puff. I feel like the Aritzia Super Puff got super popular maybe like last year or the year before that. I feel like everybody was talking about it. And I really jumped hard on the Aritzia Super Puff train. I actually have um, three, four for Aritzia Super Puffs. I really do enjoy the Aritzia Super Puffs quite a bit. Like I said, I live in Montreal. We have a very, very, very cold winter and I take my winter jackets very seriously. And go down to like minus 20 Celsius. You need something that's going to keep you warm. Um, of course you want it to be cute, but warmth really is like my biggest priority at least. If you live in a wintry climate, don't even, don't even play around. Don't even try and get a short little jacket. Get the long one that goes down to the ankles, keeps you so much warmer than a shorter jacket. Um, and for the longest time, I refused to get a super long jacket just because I felt like it wasn't as cute and it's just not worth it. And what I really like about the Aritzia Super Puff is that it's so lightweight. So despite it being like such a long jacket, it really doesn't feel like heavy or uncomfortable. I've had this long one now for three seasons, I believe, and it still looks pretty much brand new, still going strong. I'm gonna be wearing it again this year. What I do really appreciate about the Super Puffs is that there's so many different colors and finishes and styles within the within the line, so there really is something for everybody, which is cool. Um, I ended up getting this charcoal gray one. I kind of wish I got a black one, honestly, but it's totally fine. Last item in the fashion category is this tote bag. This bag is from 30 years and I purchased this after seeing it on my Instagram over and over and over and over again. Actually, I think the person who really like pushed me over the edge and really made me want to purchase this was Whitney Simmons. I think she spoke about this. I forget in what context, but I do remember that she spoke about it. And there's something about Whitney and the way that she talks about products. She influences me so much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so she did it again with this bag. For my everyday bag, I pretty much only use a tote bag. I just think that they're great because you can fit all of your shit in it. I constantly bring so many things like back and forth with me, especially to my office. So I really do need like a big everyday bag and I just love a tote bag. So it's called the Drift Tote and it is a nylon bag and it almost feels like a puffer jacket. Like it's a very interesting looking tote. I thought that this would be really great, especially for the winter time because it is nylon. It's completely water resistant. It comes in a couple different colors. I ended up getting the shade clay, which is this 
really pretty almost like brownie gray color i really really love it and just overall this is a great bag i have been wearing it every single day and using it every single day it does have a zipper which not all tote bags have which is really nice if anything i kind of want to get another color but i'm going to resist so this was this was a good purchase. I really do love this. Okay, now let's get into some home and lifestyle things. Now, when I watched Carrie's video, I saw that she mentioned the Always Pen, and I was laughing to myself because I felt very similarly to her, and I also completely was influenced to buy these pens, and I actually used to really, really love them, but my mind has completely changed about this product. It's a really good looking pen. It comes in some really pretty colors. I have this burnt orange one. I also have a green one as well. It's supposed to be completely non-stick. Also comes with a wire basket that fits perfectly in here that you could seam stuff with, and it comes with a, a cover as well. So when I first got this pen, I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, I liked it so much that I got a second one. I think I've had this now for about two years, if I'm not mistaken, and over the two years, I feel like the pen has kind of stopped working as well as it as it used to. The biggest problem that I have with it is that the nonstick coating that was on this pen is almost completely gone. So when I would go into like fry an egg, it would stick like crazy to the bottom of the pen. And there are specific instructions that come with this saying that you can't use it on super high heat because it will damage the nonstick coating. And I always made sure to not do that, to clean it properly, don't use anything too abrasive, and still the nonstick coating just like is completely gone. And that's one of the biggest draws to this pen. And this didn't just happen with just this pen, it also happened with my green one as well. So because the nonstick coating is just not really there anymore, I just don't want to use it anymore because it becomes a nightmare to clean up. That's disappointing. I wanted to talk about Dyson and not the, the Dyson product that maybe you're expecting, like the Airwrap or the Air Straight or the blow dryer, which I all love by the way, but the vacuum. I always knew that the Dyson vacuums were good. Like that's what they're known for. They're known to be like the best, but I thought that there was maybe a little bit of hype in there. Like I thought maybe people were exaggerating just a little bit. Nope, they're not. It's really the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm not even being dramatic. Now I actually didn't purchase the, the Dyson vacuum. I got it as a gift for my 29th birthday for my parents, which was incredible. It was something that I had been wanting for the longest time because everybody was talking about it and it was so, so, so hyped up. I never liked vacuuming. It was never something that I enjoyed doing around the house. And now with this Dyson vacuum, I will find reasons to take it out and to use it because it is just so satisfying seeing what it picks up and especially now that i have a cat the amount of hair that comes off of that cat's body is insane and the dyson really 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 helps in picking up all of that hair i also love that it's cordless i also never had a cordless vacuum before and that's another big huge game changer it's so easy to use and just use anywhere throughout the house i don't have to worry about a plug obviously the battery life is amazing it like runs for such a long time i never have to worry about it running out of battery as i'm using it just overall the quality the way that it works it's one of my favorite things that i have received in my adult life the woobles this is super random i know but I was so heavily influenced to pick up a Woobles kit after number one, seeing so many ads for it all over Instagram, and number two, seeing it all over TikTok, um, specifically from Elise Myers. Elise Myers is a TikToker and she started talking about how much she loves crocheting and how she does it for her anxiety. And so it got me really intrigued and really interested in wanting to try crocheting because I too have anxiety. And I decided to pick up a Woobles kit because I was seeing so many ads for it. Um, and what's nice about the Woobles kits is that it has everything that you need in one kit. I really love the Woobles kits. I found that I was able to learn how to crochet so quickly with the instructions um, and it made everything really easy. And I also loved the, the yarn that came with the kits because it's a really easy yarn to work with. And it really just opened up my, my world to crocheting, which is amazing. The one thing about the Woobles though, is that it really is only meant for beginners. Once you kind of learn how to crochet and you kind of pass that beginner threshold, I don't find the Woobles kits to be necessary at all. Now that I'm an intermediate crocheter, <laughs> I just get patterns online and that's how I make the things that I make. For example, this is my fox that I made from a pattern that I got from Etsy. How cute is he? He's wearing a little vest, I know. It's 
probably the best thing I've made. I love them so much. But all that to say, the Woobles is an amazing kit to learn how to crochet, but it's not necessary to learn how to crochet. You can totally buy all the things that you need separately. It would be less expensive, you'd get more value. But what's really nice about this like all-in-one kit is that it's an all-in-one kit and you don't really need to think about anything. Um, so even though it is more expensive to get a kit like this, I do feel like it is worth it, especially to learn like the the basics in crocheting and they really do make it just so, so, so easy. Very grateful for the Woobles ads and for Elise Myers for introducing me into the world of crocheting because it's become such a important hobby of mine now. Like I, I do it almost every single day and it's my favorite way to relax, my favorite way to decrease my anxiety and I just, I just adore it. It's so much fun. So very grateful for the Woobles. Kindle. I was very against Kindles for a very long time because I love reading and I love reading physical books and I still love reading physical books. And I've had Kindles in the past. Like I think when they first launched, I think I got a Kindle and I didn't love it. Kindle started getting really popular over on TikTok and I started seeing so many TikToks about people like decorating their Kindles and those were the videos that really got me thinking about wanting to get a Kindle, which is so weird. <laughs> but really my biggest reason as to why I wanted to get a Kindle, even though I know I have a preference for physical books, is because I wanted to be able to read on the go and have it be a little bit more convenient because while it's totally fine to take a book and throw it in your bag, there's something just so convenient about carrying around a Kindle instead of a 300 page book. So that was really like my main purpose for getting a Kindle. And I gotta say, I love it and I do not regret getting this at all because I feel like I'm reading so much more now that I have a Kindle because it's just so much easier for me to just grab my Kindle, throw it in my bag and when I'm like at a cafe or waiting somewhere instead of scrolling on my phone, I'm reading a few pages on my Kindle. And yes, I did end up decorating my Kindle with all of my really cute stickers from my stationery shop, Jamie Page Doodles. So if you also want to decorate your Kindle, I have stickers that can help you do that. And right now, if you're wondering, I'm reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Now let's talk a little bit about beauty products. Let's talk about the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy Sunshine Drops because this is a product that I've actually had in my collection since it launched like years and years and years ago. And I kind of stopped using it. Not for really any big reason, it just was a product that I kind of forgot about. And then when it started to have a resurgence on social media and everybody was like going crazy over it, it reminded me of how nice this product was and I took it out of my collection I started using it again and this is really the best case scenario when it comes to being influenced to like try a product when it's a product that you literally already have in your collection and honestly this happens a lot especially when it comes to like makeup and stuff because I'm constantly trying so many different types of products I am sometimes forgetting about a lot of products that are really great and so when social media reminds me that they're really great and then I still have them in my collection, it's really the best. And when this first launched, I used it like every once in a while but now this is a product that I really use almost every single time I do my makeup. Now this product isn't really meant to be used on its own. It's meant to mix in with either like a moisturizer or your foundation or a serum. You're not meant to use this as like a bronzer on its own but just because you're not meant to do that doesn't mean you shouldn't or couldn't do it. And social media, once again, showed me that a lot of people were actually using this as a bronzer and it was looking really, really nice. And so I started using it in that way and I love it as a pinpointed bronzer. It gives so much glow to the skin, which is so pretty. Um, and it also looks so natural looking. And so now I use it both mixed in and on its own and it's just become such a huge staple in my routine. This is another makeup product that I saw a ton all over TikTok. This is the Refai Face Primer. It's not that I don't like this product, I just don't really see the hype for this product. I am not the biggest primer person in general. If I'm gonna use a primer, I need it to do something. I need to do something other than just moisturize my, my face because I can just use my moisturizer to do that. The texture of this is very serum-y and it feels nice on the skin, but I don't feel like it really does anything extraordinary. It doesn't make my foundation go on smoother. It doesn't make my skin feel extra hydrated. It just kind of is an extra step that I don't feel like really adds anything to my routine. So. I wouldn't say like I regret buying this. I just don't feel like it's worth the hype at all. So this was a no for me. The Rode lip balms. These were so hyped up when they first launched and I definitely don't regret picking this up, but it really is just a lip balm. It's just a lip balm. It's a lip balm that's nice and shiny and it smells nice. Listen, I'm not one to talk, okay? I love trying new lip balms, even though I have like 
I don't even know, like 50 in my collection at this point. Um, it's really nice to just like try different scents and brands and textures and see how they work. At the end of the day, it really is just a lip balm and they uh, more often than not will do very similar things. So it is nice how shiny it is, but I have other lip balms that give me this amount of shine. I just feel like it's okay, it's fine. It's not worth the crazy hype. Also, a couple of the Rode lip balm scents I find smell really good, but once they're on your lips, they kind of have a weird taste to them. They almost taste like a little chemical-y, so it'll smell amazing, but it just won't taste quite right. That's another thing, so yeah. There's one thing that I wanted to mention that is like pet related because <laughs> I feel like it's maybe the stupidest thing that I ever got. So have you guys ever seen on TikTok that dog that like presses those like talking buttons? I think, I think his name is Bunny um, and it's the cutest and coolest thing. Like he will go up to buttons and be like, mom, walk, mom, want love, mom, give me treats. <laughs> It's crazy. And there was like a moment in time where I was so obsessed with watching those videos and not just Bunny, but all these other like cats and dogs who were like talking to their owners with these buttons. I just thought it was the coolest thing. So when I got Gus, I was like, I'm getting those buttons. And there are a couple different brands out there. I ended up getting uh, the one that the bunny dog uses, which is called Fluent Pet. And it was so expensive, like so expensive. My regret hit me so quickly after purchasing that. I tried to get Gus to like use them and he just was looking at me like I was absolutely insane. And even though like I would love for Gus to be able to talk to me through those buttons, it's just, <laughs> it was so silly. It was such a silly purchase and uh, that was definitely a big regret. That is it you guys. Those are all the products that I'm going to be talking about today. As I've been doing this video, I kept thinking of even more products that I've been influenced to purchase. So I feel like I can do even a part two to this. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know and I'll definitely do one. Again, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.